Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to give you some updates on the Keystone 3 Pro air gapped cold wallet. They now support Cardano with a firmware update. So I'm going to show you how to get the firmware update downloaded and installed onto your device. And then I'll pair it up with the Eternal wallet, which supports ADA. And then we'll be able to manage ADA using our Keystone 3 Pro air gapped hardware device. Also, there is a few updates on the ecosystem of the Keystone 3 Pro. They support open source now, and uh, I'll show you a little bit about what's going on there. All right, so I'm here on the Keystone homepage. They have a little information here about the Ledger dApp hack of their connection kit software. And they note that the Keystone Pro does not use that software. It is a totally air-gapped solution. And you can see all of the information about your trades and swaps on your device before you authorize outgoing transactions. So uh, you can see here on their website that uh, they now support ADA using the Eternal Wallet. I'm going to show you how to get that set up. Uh, they've also open sourced their code base over on GitHub, so you can check out all of their code and it can now be fully audited by experts. Also, they're still running uh, holiday specials. You can get the Keystone 3 Pro for a reduced price through the holidays. Looks like it ends in four days, so it might be a good opportunity to check it out. I'm going to put an affiliate link down in the description below if you're interested in checking out this wallet. I'm at their firmware uh, page. I'm going to do the Pro firmware update. I'm going to do the SD card update. Uh, I have an SD card reader here, right? Uh, this thing goes into my USB port, and then I have a little SD card here. All right, you can see I've done one before. Um, I'm just going to go over and format this. And we'll, it's already set up for FAT32. Mm -hmm. We'll do that. All right. Well, that's good. That's G drive. We'll take note of that. Uh, let's go back here and uh, do the SD card update again. And this time we'll drop it on the G drive. All right. Uh, we'll just put this here. I'm, yeah, drop that on there. Okay, we're looking good. All right, and then uh, we'll uh, pull this guy out. All right, and then we'll take our SD card, and then we'll go over here. And I hope I have enough juice on this guy. Um, I think I have, I have a charging cable that I can use. Let me see what happens when I fire it up. And so that's a charging cable. That's not, uh, my, my brick fell off the table, so it's like laying on the floor. But... Um, this is not connected. This is not a USB connected to my computer. This is just a charging cable that's connected to a charging brick that's in a wall outlet, right? So uh, let's see if we can do this, right? So we open up the side here, and uh, we put this in. It only goes in one direction. Yeah, there's. I hear the little click. All right, so it, uh, once I got the thing in there, it tells me there's an update available. Uh, do you want to update your device's firmware to the latest version? I'll say yes. That's 18%. It tells me I need 20. So I'm at 18%. I need to let it charge for a little minute. If it doesn't pop up, you can go into the three dots over here uh, to device settings, or maybe it's an about. Yeah, firmware. Uh, micro SD card and then update. Uh, we're charged up to 21%. Let me see if it'll let me do this update. So yeah, so it looks like it's updating the firmware. Now this could take a while. That's the thing. If I recall, this does take quite a while, but we'll give it a sec. Let's see what happens. I'll give it a minute. See where we go from there. Okay, looks like uh, I did the, I managed to get it updated, right? Firmware 1.2.2. Oh yeah, 1.2.2. 2. 
So that's the version that we have over on this guy, uh, version 1.2.2. So, uh, and they said that they're now supporting uh, ADA, right? Uh, there it is. So now you can manage Cardano on your Keystone 3 Pro, but apparently they support it. Oh, they said it had to be on the Eternal, right? So now I'm going to have to get the Eternal wallet. Uh, let's see, the Eternal. I don't think I have this one. Let me check. Okay, yeah, I think that's it, right? Eternal. I recognize the icon, and I guess I'll have to pair it up and all that. All right, now that we have the Eternal app downloaded and initialized, we want to create a new wallet and bind it to our Keystone 3 Pro. So this will make the wallet a cold wallet. When we bind our hardware device to one of these wallets, that means the private key is stored offline and it becomes a cold wallet. So that's what we're doing here. We're gonna initialize a wallet and instead of creating a wallet, on the phone, which would be a hot wallet, we're going to connect to a hardware wallet, which will make it a cold wallet or a hardware wallet. All right, and uh, they support Keystone. So we'll just tap that and then uh, we'll hit next. I think we could uh, edit the number of accounts. I'm gonna stick with just one account. Uh, we'll hit save here. And so what we want to do now is scan this QR code with our device. So uh, we've already enabled ADA. All right, so we tap this icon here and it opens up the camera on our device and it scans in the code from the app. All right, and we'll tap approve. Uh, now uh, we want to complete this operation by scanning the code from our hardware device, which will allow the public information of the wallet to be accessible through this phone app. So we'll allow camera access. We'll go ahead and scan that. There we go. All right, so we've uh, created the wallet and we're ready to go. Now we can fund this wallet by doing a deposit. So as you can see, we have zero balance. We just need to drop a little ADA in here. Now we don't really need the device uh, to authorize incoming transactions, right? So uh, we're not going to need to do any uh, air gap QR code scanning when we make deposits, All right? We've already bound the public information of the wallet onto the app. So let's do a receive. And this is the address of our wallet. We'll copy that into our clipboard by just tapping there. And now uh, let's go over to an exchange like Coinbase and just transfer some crypto into this wallet. So I'll go over to my Coinbase account. In my portfolio, you can see that I have some ADA token. So we're going to withdraw. We'll withdraw crypto and we'll choose our Cardano. I'm gonna paste in the address that the Eternal Wallet gave me, and I'll choose Continue. Now, in today's case, I'm just gonna send it all. It's $100 worth, it's a fairly small amount. If you have a large amount of Cardano in your Coinbase account, please do a small test first to make sure it gets to where you're intending. Right? I've heard too many stories of people uh, sending crypto to the wrong address uh, because they weren't sure what they were doing. So please don't send large amounts until you've confirmed that the transfer is going to work. We'll hit send now. And I'll need my two-factor. I can go over to my authenticator, tap this code so it goes into my clipboard, slide back over, and do a paste. All right, and so the uh, transaction is on its way. It'll take it a few minutes to process out. You can see here that I have a pending sent transaction. And then uh, we can go back over to the Eternal Wallet and just kind of wait. 
Right, we can tap this to connect to the blockchain. All right, and you can see that the ADA has arrived in the wallet. So now I'm managing this ADA safely and securely. And remember, this is the public part of the wallet. This is the private part of the wallet. We, it's, it's a wallet with two components, right? Keeping the private key offline makes this wallet system a hardware wallet. All right, now uh, I would be remiss if I didn't show you how to send ADA back so that you can see how the hardware uh, authorization works. First thing before I do a send is to get a destination. I can just send it right back to Coinbase. Uh, I'm gonna hit deposit here. I'll choose deposit crypto, and then I will choose Cardano. All right, so I'll get the address from my of my Coinbase account. The Cardano wallet in my Coinbase account is uh, specific to me, to my account. I'll go back over to the Eternal wallet and I'll do a send. All right, and we'll enter the address in this box here. I'll tap paste. That's the Cardano address that I want to send to. And then here I can put in my amount. I'll go ahead and send about 100 tokens. Uh, we've got everything lined up. Now we'll choose send. And we need to sign the outgoing transaction. Uh, the, the Eternal app is not capable of sending out unless it is authorized by the device. So I'll tap sign here. There's that QR code. This is the request. All right, so I go back to my hardware device. I tap the uh, camera icon, and I'm going to scan that QR code in. So now the hardware wallet has received a request to authorize an outgoing transaction. I can look at all of the information, make sure it's correct. We can uh, even scroll down just a little bit to see more information, right? That's the amount that I'm sending. I'll slide this over and then uh, I have to authorize with my fingerprint. I've set that part up. Yeah, the fingerprint is here. It's signing the transaction. Now I've received an authorization. And so now uh, the public part of the wallet needs to receive that authorization. So it opens up its camera. I scan this QR code. And off it goes. All right. So once the hardware wallet has authorized the outgoing transaction, then the wallet can send out the ADA that we designated. So you can see here the outgoing transaction of 100 ADA plus the fee. Now this fee is on the ADA blockchain, the Cardano blockchain. The wallet is not charging you the fee. The blockchain is charging you the fee. That's how crypto works. Uh, we can refresh up here if we need to. All right, so the wallet has processed the outgoing transaction and the uh, outgoing transaction is now being processed on the Cardano blockchain. Uh, we can go back over to our Coinbase account. We'll just monitor our account for that incoming ADA transaction. Now you can see that the ADA has hit my Coinbase account and the transfer was successful. We funded the wallet with some ADA and then I showed you how to transfer it back out. You didn't necessarily need to send it back to Coinbase. You could have sent it anywhere. Could have sent it to a different wallet, your friend's wallet, or a different exchange. Uh, crypto transactions are, uh, you have all the power of uh, managing your crypto with your own crypto wallet. So if you have any questions about anything I did, please throw them up in the comments and I'll do my best to get them answered. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that you can click that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.